What time is it? Fourth and fifth grade, welcome back. Today is our last assignment in the Renaissance. We are going to learn about the proportions of the human face and in the next two weeks, we are going to paint the best self-portrait that I have ever asked you to paint. We drew self-portraits two weeks ago when we did our Vitruvian Man self-portrait on our last assignment of the Da Vinci Body Study but I'm pretty sure we haven't painted a self-portrait together since first grade. You probably remember this assignment. I want you to paint the best self-portrait that we can do together. But before we do that, let's talk about the proportions of the human face. We've mentioned how the Renaissance was a rebirth of ideas from the antique world, from antiquity, of the Greek and the Romans. Uh, Renaissance artists and architects throughout Europe utilized what they called the golden ratio when considering how to make their masterpieces. Even today, scientists and aestheticians use these mathematical formulas to determine why we think something is beautiful and why it's not. Obviously, the golden ratio doesn't work for everyone. Everyone that you know, everyone that I know, has a different face. That's how we can tell them apart. I guess unless they're identical twins. But even then, their parents probably could tell them apart. What we are going to do is try and figure out the most common elements in every face using the golden ratio. I'm not thrilled about this, but we can use my face as an example. The human head is about one and a half times longer or taller than it is wide. The eye line falls about halfway across the face. You heard me right, halfway. And the nose line, is about halfway between the eye line and the chin. The mouth line is almost halfway between the nose and the chin. The average human face is about five eyes wide if you're measuring it with eyeballs. If I were to draw an imaginary line across my eyes and nose, extending it out, uh, you would see that the top of my ears just about match my eye line and the bottom of my nose just about matches my ears. If you want to know how wide to make your mouth, an imaginary line down the center of the eye, that is about how wide your mouth would be. Obviously these proportions change if the head is turned this way or this way, or looking up or looking down. These measurements really only apply if the face is looking directly at you. So let's go ahead and draw two examples right now. I'm gonna start with a white piece of paper and I'm going to use light colors for my construction lines. You could use a yellow marker, yellow pencil, yellow crayon, or even light blue, a very light pink, a light green. It's supposed to be hard to see because they are the construction lines. They are for you to see and not the audience. The black marker I'm gonna use for details because if I were to make a Xerox copy, that's what would show up. That's what I want people to see. So I'm going to do this. What I'm about to do, I want you to do on both halves. One can be like a reference, and the other one can be one that we can play with. I'm going to use the blue because I think it will show up easier for the video. I'm going to draw two ovals, one on each half. I will draw a line of symmetry down the middle of both of them. I will draw the eye line across the middle of both of them. Halfway between the eye line and the chin line, I will draw a line for where the nose would go. And halfway between the nose and the chin, I'll draw a line where the mouth would go. Now this is a tricky part. Uh, the human head should be about five eyes wide. So I'm going to try and make each head five eyes wide. And I've done this before, so it's not that tricky. But for you, if you fit six eyes, they're too small. If you only fit three eyes, they're way too big. Try and do five eyes. Obviously, if you numbered them one through five, number two and number four are the real eyes. So I'll draw circles in here. 
I know the middle eye, number three, would be where the nose would go. I'll draw my fake dotted line down the eyes to let me know how wide the mouth should be. And then I will draw ears in between the eye line and the nose line. Now, the last step in my construction is drawing the neck. If I was drawing a skinny person or a child or even a lady, I would give them a slender skinny neck. If I was drawing an adult male, I would make a thicker neck and shoulders. And if I was drawing a crazy muscle man, a uh, football player, wrestler, Incredible Hulk, I would give them a gigantic thick neck that comes right out of their ears. The one on the left I'm gonna call practice and the one on the right I'm gonna call fun time. So with my black marker, I'm going to start adding details such as eyebrows, and I will add details to the eyes. Don't leave any part untraced because then you've just got facial features floating in the middle of nowhere. Uh, add a nose, add some nostrils, draw a shine on the eyes, the iris, the pupil. I'll make this a lady, I'll add eyelashes, Kind of give her a smirk, give her lips, give her a round jawline, add ears, add hair, maybe give them some bangs. And now just for fun, I'm going to do a gigantic wrestler neck with veins popping out. It looks gross, but basically just have fun and uh, add whatever details make you laugh, make you giggle. See you next time. Bye. Today's pro tip is a problem that I see when kids are painting and they get excited. And it's a problem I would like to avoid in the future. This paintbrush has a handle and bristles, but this metal part that holds it all together is called the ferrule spelled F-E-R-R-U-L-E. -R -R -E. Paintbrushes aren't the only things with ferrules. Off the top of my head, uh, pencils have a ferrule, golf clubs have a ferrule, but what I want to talk to you about is using the ferrule of the paintbrush. When you are painting and dipping in the paint, all you wanna do is dip the bristles in, just like this. This is the right way to do it. The paint is not in the ferrule. If you're touching the metal, you've gone too far. I have seen kids do it like this. That's a big no-no. And I have even seen kids do it like this. That's definitely a big no-no. This is the perfect way to do it. <laughs> Bonus points! If you were dividing the human head into fractions, what fraction would the forehead be?